Welcome to the Impact of Reality. Where we tackle the tough topics of relationships and relational values. I'm your host, LK Harris. Welcome to the Impact of Reality. My name is L.K. Harris, and I'm your host. Today we think we have with us Ms. Morgan Avery McCoy, author, playwright, actress, and just all-around sweet person. Aww. So when we come back, we're going to have an in-depth conversation with Morgan Avery McCoy on relationships and relational values. See you in a second. Come see us at Murray Automotive, 1731 Dolphin Court, Palatine, Virginia, two and a half miles west of 288 and Route 60. Welcome to the Impact of Reality. I'm your host, L.K. Harris. Join us right here every Saturday at 12 noon on WRIC TV, Channel 8. See you there. We at Planners Harvest want you to meet the movers, the shakers, the ones that won't take no for an answer. Let us at Planners Harvest Incorporated show the world what your dreams truly look like. Let us put your dreams on display. And we're back with Ms. Morgan Avery McCoy. So Morgan, yes. you've been doing a lot of things, but I don't need to know, you've been acting and writing for who knows how long? How long have you been acting and writing? Since I was seven years old, actually, <laughs> wow. I started acting. Um, and thank you so much for having me on the show. I really oh, appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure. It. It's our blessing to have you. <laughs> But when I was seven years old, I was one of those real shy little kids who was scared mm -hmm. to look at people, scared to talk to people. And I just had very supportive parents, so they put me in ballet, tap, everything that they could possibly <laughs> put me in to try to get me out there and I quit everything but drama. It was just something about <laughs> drama that I liked and I kind of came alive on stage and it really helped bring me out my own personality too. So that's how I started with acting at seven and I saw something I probably shouldn't have seen. You won't tell anybody, y'all won't you tell anybody. You wanna share that, right? I'm, I saw <laughs> Pretty Woman, the movie, uh, yes. Uh, uh, Julia Roberts? I, with Julia Roberts. Okay, okay. And I just, I just began to like be so inspired by Julia Roberts and I wanted to be like Julia Roberts. I didn't connect, you know, what she was doing. <laughs> and so people would be like, oh, little girl, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, I want to be like Pretty Woman. Uh... Yeah. And my mom was like, Morgan, never say that again. You know, and she was just like, Julia Roberts is an actress. And that's actually when I started saying that I want to be an actress. And yeah. um, just really observing her and Angela Bassett, Meryl Streep, and um, just really became fascinated with the craft and started going to summer camps and things like that. So that's how the acting began. And I'll never forget one day I was in church and we had a guest speaker and he called me up and he said, young lady, you're going to be a writer. And I, you know, I'm a kid. Kids mm -hmm. don't really know protocol. Mm -hmm. And I looked to my mom and I said, he doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm supposed to be an actress. And my mom was like, Morgan, stop. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but lo and behold, you know, writing is something that I love. And I actually, that, that gift began to develop when I went to uh, Hampton University in theater because okay. you had to take playwriting courses mm -hmm. and, and things of that nature. So that's how that all awesome. began. Awesome, yeah, awesome, awesome. I love it. I love and it. in front of you, you have a copy of your book. Hold that up so people I can do. see your book. It's a, yes. what, what is it about? It's called Something to Talk About, and it's actually a monologue and poetry devotional book. Okay. And so it's one of those self-help books. It's 21 life-changing conversations I had with okay. God, and he had right with now. me. Yeah, through monologue and poetry form. I love writing. Writing is very cathartic. And so uh, whenever I would have a, a time where I'd be struggling, you know, I would write a poem. You know, okay, I'd write okay. a story. I'd write a monologue. And um, I went through something when I was in grad school at Regent University. My fiance and I, we broke up. And I was just so sad Aww. about it. Yeah, like crying <laughs> all the time. And what I really felt like the Lord was saying for me to write. And I didn't want to write. Uh -huh. I wanted to cry uh -huh. and eat ice cream. <laughs> That's what I wanted to do. But um, God said, right. And so I didn't realize that as I wrote, he was really healing me, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. through the writing process. That's what God yeah, does. Yeah, and that's exactly what he did for me. And so after I finished writing the book, I was like, oh, yay. 
and but there was like an urgency of like let's do more with this mm-hmm. and so um i did the whole process of writing and met some people here in richmond actually iris i met her okay. and she told mm-hmm. me about her self-publishing process and so she really inspired me and i was able to get um the book out and then to see people healed from it and right. i was like wow oh, god you know you it's a bigger picture so it's been really god, cool. god is good yes god he is, is. Good. I he is. Yes, yeah I, I, I met iris i was a really sweet yes, really sweet is. lady she's She's a hard-working woman. She that's is. For sure. Yes. Yeah, so. I'm trying to get my second book out. I don't know. She has like 50 <laughs> books, um, but I'm working on my second now. But yeah, yeah. she's yeah, a Well, you know, I tell you, it's um, writing books is 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 is, is, is hard. But the hardest part is starting. It is. Just to <laughs> do it. Just to set some time. Yes. Like, I'm going to write. You know? Yes. Then yeah, that, so. That's the whole thing. Yes. So, but now, going to this next topic, I, I really wanted to ask you about because I, I, I really want to know how you even did it. I mean, going on tour and yes. and, and being... You know, I don't know if it was Louis Gossett with you or he... No, he wasn't yeah, with okay, me. Tell us about that. I, I have three one-woman shows, but I just got mm-hmm. off of a tour with one of my one-woman shows called Evolution of a Black Girl from the Slave House to the White House. And in that show, I play 12 characters. And so I start mm-hmm. in the 1400s in Africa and I end playing Michelle Obama, but I play Rosa right. Parks, Greta Scott King, Madam C.J. Walker, Maggie Walker, just a whole lot of women okay. who really impacted our, our history mm-hmm. and telling their stories, telling about their heartbreaks, telling about their obstacles, and how they overcame it and in writing the the show really inspired me because a lot of these women we don't know we just know madam cj walker was the you know first african-american female self-made millionaire but we Mm -hmm. don't know that she was an orphan we don't know you know that she was abused we don't Mm -hmm. know that she couldn't read Mm -hmm. and so when you learn more about her it inspires you to say man if she could do it i can do it too Mm -hmm. you know and so that's the whole concept with the show and so god has really opened up opportunities i've been touring it for two years now Wow. and it started you know with I finished writing it and uh, the church that I attend now actually booked me to come okay, in February okay. and from that I got five other bookings and from that I got All ten right, other yeah. book- and it just kind of the word spread about the show and so I've done it for civic organizations and colleges and museums and wow. um, detention centers schools but what happened with this past college tour, I went just got off of a 30 city college tour and yes 30, 30 city you clock some miles yes we <laughs> Yes, we did. That's an excellent love. Yes, 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 yeah. I have all the receipts to prove it. Um, but uh, we were on the road. We were in Texas and Georgia and Florida and um, Ohio, Illinois, just all over. I'm getting a chance to connect with the students and share the show. But what happened last year, I went to this organization to have a big seminar where colleges meet artists. Mm. And so you get 10 minutes to do your thing. You know what I mean? So it's like, make it or break it. You know what I mean? Like this. (laughs) And I I put a fleece out. I said, you know, if I'm supposed to still, I love doing the show, but if this is what I'm called and purpose to do, Mm because I'm really big on being where I'm purpose. If I'm called to do this, then let me book at least three shows. Least. That was my that was my fleece. Is that I want to book three shows, and uh, my church actually helped me get there, and like some okay. other because there was you know financially had to pay some things to be a part of the conference, right. and so um, it was just so or it was just one of those providential things. Right. Um, so it was it was a blessing. Okay. Well, look, we're gonna take a small break, and we'll be back to continue this conversation with Morgan Avery McCoy. Thank you. Welcome to the Impact of Reality. I'm your host, L.K. Harris. Join us right here every Saturday at 12 noon on WRIC TV, Channel 8. See you there. We at Planners Harvest want you to meet the movers, the shakers, the ones that won't take no for an answer. Let us at Planners Harvest Incorporated show the world what your dreams truly look like. Let us put your dreams on display. Come see us at Murray Automotive, 1731 Dolphin Court, Palatine, Virginia, two and a half miles west of 288 and Route 60.
And we're back with Ms. Morgan Avery McCoy, telling us all about the tour. Yes. Go ahead, Morgan. Tell us so about it. So, like I said, it was just one of those providential things. So when I get up there for 10 minutes to do an excerpt of my show, at the end of the night, everybody books for who they want. Mm -hmm. And I broke a record. And so within that 10 minute, 30 people, 30 colleges wow. booked the show. 30, 30 colleges. Um, so it was just really, really a blessing. And wow. I was excited about that. Mm -hmm. But then it was just like, I had to get to all these places, right. you know. <laughs> and um, and so my, my mother had met uh, Mr. Gossett a couple of years prior in New York when he was doing his book signing for his book. And okay. so we had been in communication with him because he has a foundation called the E-Racism Foundation. Okay. And the whole concept of the foundation is to erase racism in our nation and really right. building a holistic benevolence and forgiveness, understanding, mm -hmm. and understanding various cultures and having conversations. So all the things that we're seeing right now won't exist. And so right. I really appreciate the foundation. And so he called me um, two years ago when I first started the show and he said, I just want you to know that I'm so proud of you. And I kept that voicemail as long as I could. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness. And so my mother had um, reached out to him and shared with him about what we were doing and how we're going to, you know, diverse campuses and, you know, educating and entertaining people. And so the E-Racism Foundation actually came on board as the sponsor mm -hmm. of the travel wow. um, of the show, which was such a blessing, you know, because there was no way that I would have been able to get to all of those places had it right. not been for, for their partnership. So to be able to, so he asked me to come on board as an ambassador for E-Racism Foundation. And so... And it's something that I believe in, you know, because obviously mm -hmm. a lot of times people say, well, we've, we have come far, but there's definitely further that we need to go. So right. have a lot of work to do. Yeah, so do. Um, I really respect what he's doing. He said with his later, the latter part of his life, he really wants to focus on erasing, erasing racism. So that is wow. uh, what he's That's doing. That's amazing. It is, it is. Uh, but uh, 30 colleges. 30 colleges, yes. How many miles? I have no, have no idea. idea. I have no <laughs> idea. Because we drove to Texas. Of... And in Texas, wow. we did six shows in Texas. But okay. each show was about six hours away from each other in Texas. <laughs> I didn't realize <laughs> when they booked me, I was uh, like, oh, y'all are all in the same vicinity. No, right. <laughs> absolutely not. So even in Florida, you know, I did some things in Tampa. Then I was in Orlando. And then, you know. Miami, so, yeah. yeah. Like 16 so, hours yes, apart. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's crazy. So we, it's crazy. Yeah, we, we put some miles on that rental van. We definitely got <laughs> I'm glad it wasn't my van, but we definitely, yeah. That yeah. <laughs> but it was brand new. It was a brand new rental okay. van, so it kind of worked out. So we, I had a great experience. Went to places I'd never seen before and got a chance wow. to really inspire students. Mm -hmm. You know, to have like students come up to me saying, I was about to quit college, but when I saw your show, it changed my life. Mm -hmm. It just made it all worthwhile. I was tired. I hadn't seen my bed for two months, but it was worth it. You know, just to be yeah. able to um, inspire two in that way. Months. Two months, yes. Hotels. Hotels. <laughs> you know, we got so close with some of those housekeepers. That uh, were, uh, you know, one, when we were in Atlanta, we stayed at the same hotel for two weeks. And so they cried when we left and, like, brought us food. <laughs> and we're like, all right, we'll keep in touch. Like, it just <laughs> felt like family because we've been there so long. So, wow. Yeah. Like, yes. I couldn't imagine staying in a hotel for two weeks. I know. I think four days was was my limit, I think. Four days, <laughs> Four yes. days was my limit. Nah, two, two months. Mm -hmm. You said two months or two weeks? Two months. Two months. I mean, we, we were in hotels oh, for two okay, months, two but months. not okay, the same well, hotel. Two. Okay. No, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Wow. Yes. Okay, but still. Yeah. yeah but you're on the road for two months. That's still two months. Yes. driving. Did you do most of the driving or mm -hmm. did you do most I of the I had a wonderful team the of people that came <laughs> with me. Also known as my mother and father, mother. <laughs> and um, also uh, one of my other team members. She came for the first month, and so um, she was there. And so they did the bulk of. I did drive, but they did you the did bulk drive. of driving because after the show, I was tired. Of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pack up and yeah, put a lot of stuff in the van. Yes, exactly. Find yourself a little place back there to lay your head. A down. little, a literally a little place. Because <laughs> we had a, you know, we had a lot of props. Yeah, I've seen your show, yes. so I know you have a lot of stuff yes. that you kind of. Yes. Carrie, with you, I tell you, it's an amazing show. Thank I, you, know, you. From what I could see, because I, I I'm banned from. And you, which, yes, you saw She's Got Issues, which is my second show. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, that yeah. show deals with um, a lot of women's rights issues, breast mm -hmm. cancer, domestic violence, human trafficking, yeah, um, sexual abuse, and this is a real healing show. Mm -hmm. um, so She's Got Issues is different than Evolution of a Black Girl, but both inspiring. And so I'm really passionate about that one too. Have you ever thought about doing something like that for men? So just all he's men. He's got issues. Mm -hmm. He's got. No. <laughs> he's got. He's got. Trust me, we have issues. <laughs> yes, 
Yes. <laughs> Somebody actually told me that I should do an evolution of a black boy, which I'm totally open to, but I don't. I couldn't see myself playing it, so I would right. have to. I would write it and have some somebody. Well, else. you know, if you did that, your play mm-hmm. for men and invite men to your play, I would love for men to come. See, because I think um, as 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 men, mm-hmm. we don't get to see the other side. The other side. Yeah. The way you betray. Yeah. See, the way you portray it, 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 it hits home. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it, it actually had me thinking, I'm looking at, at you and, and pulling off all these, and it's not just so much as being funny, it's being real. It's real, yeah. So uh, it's, 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 it's amazing the way you do that, and then you just go from scene to scene. Yeah. I, I just love watching you do Oh, thanks, God. Thank you. <laughs> You're an amazing actress. I tell Thank you, 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 so you do your thing, stage and screen. Thank Wait you. Minute, you've done stage, movies, and t- You've hit, hit, hit the trifecta. What's, how do you do that? I mean, <laughs> I I just I'm I thank God for the opportunity because I love I love what I do I love acting you mm-hmm. know and so whether it's on stage whether it's on film whether it's in the small screen you know whatever it is I love doing it and initially I thought that I was just going to focus on film and TV work so I told all mm-hmm. of my theater professors that I just went here to get the piece of paper but I'm not doing theater and so it's interesting <laughs> that I'm doing theater the way that right. I do it but yeah I love it. That's awesome. That's awesome. You just just get up there and do your thing, and people just fall in love with you. Oh, well, they I love what I do, and I love it's, people, it's so amazing. it's a blessing. You know, it, so, but I'm gonna when we come back because we're gonna take a break in a few seconds. Okay. When we come back, I'm gonna find out how you manage to have a personal life. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Outside of all that traveling and touring, and okay. and, and and you had all these men too watching mm-hmm. you, like, what? and since she's beautiful. Does she have one? That's okay. When we come back, we'll talk about that. Okay. Well, when we come back, we'll finish our conversation with Ms. Morgan Avery McCord. See you in a little bit. So come see us at Murray Automotive, 1731 Dolphin Court, Palatine, Virginia. Two and a half miles west of 288 and Route 60. We at Planners Harvest want you to meet the movers, the shakers, the ones that won't take no for an answer. Let us at Planners Harvest Incorporated show the world what your dreams truly look like. Let us put your dreams on display. Hi, I'm Margo. Join us on the Impact of Reality Saturdays at 12 noon on WRIC Channel 8, where we will tackle the tough topics of relationships and relational values. So join us, we'll see you then. We at Planners Harvest want you to meet the movers, the shakers, the ones that won't take no for an answer. Let us at Planners Harvest Incorporated show the world what your dreams truly look like. Let us put your dreams on display. And we're back. So Morgan, with everything you have going on, Tell me, how do you manage to even have a personal life? <laughs> well, I think balance is really important. And so I've really tried to make sure that I balance my career and also my friendships and family relationships. And I'm grateful because everybody that's in my life, they're very patient. And mm-hmm. they know that I love them, you know. So <laughs> when I'm not working, I'm there, you know. And so I try to be at everything that I can possibly be in and they call you know my my aunt you know had suffered with dementia a while oh, back and so you. before my shows if she calls me I still pick up and I'm like is everything okay until you know right. so mm-hmm. it's not like I'm so consumed with work that I don't make time for those that are close to me and I actually started uh, dating this great guy right before my tour and I okay. didn't know how okay. that was gonna go but he just like everybody else has just been really patient and my friends oh. are you know, okay. really patient, and so everybody's texting when I was on tour, like, okay, we love you, we're praying for you, and, um, you know, he came out to Georgia and Florida okay. when I, you know, okay. sometimes, awesome. so, yeah, so, it really has worked really well, so, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm doing an okay job, I think that I, <laughs> you know, we can always improve, and so I would mm-hmm. like to balance a little bit better, but I definitely, I appreciate everybody in my life, and, you know, my friends have been really great, my church family's been great. My parents, my parents, you know, they're, right. you know, they're awesome, and he's been really great too. So, yeah, I met them. They are, oh, yes, they are beautiful people. I tell you, I really, they're an inspiration to me. 
Yeah. I love it. They're, they're, they're we, wonderful. We've had great conversations and, you know, your pop and I, we, we, we kind of you know, yeah. hit it off. Yeah. And, and not to say me and your mom have it. No, they're really sweet you people. Yeah. You know, they're really great people. So I can see where you get it from. Oh, yeah. yeah they, <laughs> I mean, they made me. So, they, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everything, you know, all the good stuff that people are like, oh, that's really great. It's from them and all the other stuff. And like, that's Morgan right yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's all you. Yeah, that's all me. Yeah. <laughs> well, you had to add a little bit of your own stuff. Exactly. You find your own identity. Right. So, yeah. yeah. So, so when you find out that your own identity is jacked up, then you have to go back right. to the roots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go back to the roots. That's the part that people want to see. The, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Let's get back. To, let's get back to the roots <laughs> yeah. of things. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I understand, and, and and I tell you, um, just being around your family and, and yourself. It's just been, you know, inspiration to us. It's just, you know, you. my wife and I, we just, just love hanging out with you guys. Oh, that's how <laughs> I feel. You know, y'all are my favorite couple aside from my parents. I'm like, they're so lovey-dovey all the time. You, know, <laughs> you always say that. So. Yeah, which is beautiful because a lot of times you don't see people, you see people married, but they're not happy about their marriage. Right. And so it's always encouraging, you know, especially someone that wants to get married to see other people that it's not just a McCoy thing. You know, there's right. other people who love their spouses and know how to engage with them. So. Well, that's what relationships are all about. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's built on respect. It's built on love. But the main thing is built on, in my own opinion, is conversation. You have to be able to talk to each other about mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. And some people say, well, you can't tell them everything. Well, if you can't tell them everything, then you don't trust them with everything. That's so true. how are you going to trust someone that you can't tell, you can't tell hmm. everything too. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. If That's you can't, true. if you can't trust them, for example, you can't give someone your bank card and say go to the bank and get get a hundred dollars out and bring the card back. Mm -hmm. and I had a, a friend of mine tell me, well, you know, I don't trust that person with my bank card. I'm not going. But, they get, but they're getting but they're getting married. Yeah. But they're getting married two months from this point. I'm like, wow. and you're getting married, really? Yeah. To, to that same person that you don't trust with your bank card, mm -hmm. but yet you're going to trust them with your life, mm -hmm. really? So you rather trust someone with your life and not trust them with your money. Wow. Doesn't quite sound like That's the right deep. thing for me. That's deep. Yeah. You know, you know, I'll give you my, my money before I give you my, my life. My life. Yeah. But, but anyway, I digress. So, I have another question for you. Yes. If there was anything in your life that you felt you needed to change, what would that be and why? Anything in my life that I felt like I needed to change. Um, that's a, interesting. That's a deep question. Okay. I think that for me, I wish that I knew when I was younger, what I know now, you know, just about life and about mm -hmm. being comfortable in your own skin. Cause I was a very tense child. You know, <laughs> I made straight A's. I was a valedictorian in my high school class and all this kind of awesome. stuff, but I was just like, so focused. I just took things too seriously. And so I think it's important to get your education support and to strive for excellence, but you experiencing life is learning too. Mm -hmm. And so I think that I was so caught up on not messing up that I didn't live, if that right. makes sense. Right. No, and yeah. so um, not saying do anything crazy, but just not be so tense. And mm -hmm. I was just really, I used to worry all the time. And so if I knew now that I, you know, what I, if I knew then what I know now it would be, I would change that because I would, probably would have um, learned even more, you know, than what I had to so learn, learn about. more about, about life. About life. Things. Yeah, about yeah. life. Yeah, because nobody, child. you're not asking me anything from a chemistry test, you know, that does, <laughs> you know, now. Right. And so even though I learned it, there were other things that I probably could have experienced in addition to learning that. Mm -hmm. um, but I was kind of had a tunnel vision, and so I was just focused right. on on one area. You were driven. I was. You were driven. Very so. driven. Very driven. Very <laughs> driven. I mean, valedictorian. I, I think. Let me see. Where was I? No, we won't even go there. <laughs> we won't even go I'm there. I'm sure you <laughs> were. You were high up there. All... Uh uh. No. <laughs> <laughs> I made it out. You made. That's all that matters. I, 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 I made. It, I made it to college. Praise <laughs> God. But <laughs> yeah. you know. <laughs> No, I was more like, you know, we had a, yeah, I was eh, somewhere in there. Yeah. I, <laughs> I think I enjoyed life too much. Okay. But so that's that okay. balance. Yeah, that balance. <laughs> so that, see, now I was on I'm one side, to... you were on the other. Right. But, we, but we both ended up here. There you so go. it worked out. So, so you got yours done early, I got mine done late. Yes. Okay, so we'll live with that. We'll live with it. It's okay. It's okay. We, we both managed to write books. Right. Yeah, so that's, that's that's it that's out. A major plus. So, <laughs> that's funny because you know, I, I just think about um, 
the things, some of the things I've done back in life, and I just thank God. Yeah. That's all I can do. Grace. That's the, <laughs> grace and mercy and all yes. that other kind of stuff that goes with it. Because I tell you, whoo, and just thinking about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we're gonna stop right there for a second. We're gonna take another break, and we'll be right back with our conclusion. Thank you. Come see us at Murray Automotive, 1731 Dolphin Court, Palatine, Virginia, two and a half miles west of 288 and Route 60. We at Planners Harvest want you to meet the movers, the shakers, the ones that won't take no for an answer. Let us at Planners Harvest Incorporated show the world what your dreams truly look like. Let us put your dreams on display. Join us on the Impact of Reality Saturdays at 12 noon on WRIC Channel 8, where we will tackle the tough topics of relationships and relational values. So join us. We'll see you then. We at Planners Harvest want you to meet the movers, the shakers, the ones that won't take no for an answer. Let us at Planners Harvest Incorporated show the world what your dreams truly look like. Let us put your dreams on display. And we're back with Ms. Morgan, Ava McCoy. We'd like to thank her for being with us. Thank you so much. And you wanted to give them a website. What, what is your website? Yes, feel free to reach out to me. You can go to the website. It's www.evolutionofablackgirl.com or www.morganavery, A-V-E-R-Y, McCoy, M-C-C-O-Y, dot com. All right. All right. We're going to be looking for you to do some big things. Thank you so much, OK. It's my pleasure. In conclusion. We're all in relationships, from conception to completion. It's just a matter of how you word it or how, you, how your expectations are. Just stay focused on your goals and love someone because there are a lot of us out there that have no truth in love, don't even know what love is. So stay focused on your goals. If you're gonna be in a relationship, then make sure you value that relationship and it's healthy for you. Thank you so much. I'm L.K. Harris. Thanks for being with us on the Impact of Reality. See you next week.